Robin. Robin's communicator, may I? Put Robin on. Now! Uh, he's kind of in the middle of something. Well, tell him I don't do babysitting. Raven told me to tell you she doesn't babysit. Robin says you have to. Can't someone else do it? Starfire likes people, or a cyborg. Everyone else is on other missions. You're gonna have to know. Are you gonna help us, lady? <sighs> Which one are you? Melvin. Melvin, huh? You're the leader of this team? I guess. They're always following me around. All right, Melvin. I'll take you and your team to the drop-off, but that's it. You've all got powers. What can you do? Bobby can dance. Want to see? Uh, no. What's up, guys? It is Ethi, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about antinatalism again. My last video about antinatalism got a whole fuck ton of dislikes compared to likes, and to be honest, I couldn't give less of a fuck. Firstly, if you saw that video and you disliked it simply because you disagreed, you are very childish. Instead of trying to tear someone down due to a contention, wouldn't it make more sense to politely and charitably try to hash that out? Secondly, if your goal is to deplatform me or incentivize me to cease making videos, you're disadvantaging yourself by disliking it because matter of fact, I look at the videos that get a lot of dislikes and I essentially create more of the same content. This is because if there are a lot of dislikes, there are usually a lot of views as well. So even though you dislike the video, you are essentially promoting it by viewing it and incentivizing me to make more of the same content, hence this video. If you want me to stop making videos, just don't watch them. That'd make a hell of a lot more sense. That being said, I do think there was an issue with my previous video, that being that I didn't deploy my main argument against antinatalism. I deployed it in my video titled, it, it is immoral, or is it immoral to have kids, but for the record, I'll deploy it again. I think that antinatalism is false because causing suffering isn't necessarily bad if there is more well-being being perpetuated overall. So even though when you're having kids you're causing non-consensual inevitable suffering, that doesn't necessarily matter if it could be said that the life would be more positive than negative and their existence would probably have a more positive than negative effect on the overall well-being, which can be said in some situations. Antinatalists tend to fall into a hole of thinking of things that are far too simplistic. So, for example, the notion that it would be bad to cause non-consensual inevitable suffering because suffering is bad. This is a demented form of absolutism that most likely contradicts with other beliefs that an antinatalist may hold. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention to a hypothetical I've thought of. Let's say you've adopted a dog and this dog requires emergency heart surgery and of course this dog will experience non-consensual inevitable suffering as a result of the surgery uh, but this dog's life would be better overall in the case of the surgery taking place. An antinatalist who holds this absolutist principle of it being immoral to expose others to non-consensual inevitable suffering would be forced to say it is immoral to give this dog emergency heart surgery and if they didn't think it was immoral that would clearly contradict the absolute principle that you claim to be holding while holding a view that clearly contradicts it. <clears throat> Is it just me, or does it sound completely retarded to say that it's immoral to give your dog emergency heart surgery? This is because well-being ought to be considered as well, not just suffering, and some antinatalists realize that well-being ought to be considered, but fall into this position of suffering being more considerable than well-being. This is complete nonsense. Well-being is just as good as suffering is bad. If good is defined as what's desirable, and bad is defined as what is undesirable, how could you say bad is more undesirable than good is desirable? For everything that is undesirable, you could find something that is just as desirable as these things are undesirable. This is analogous to saying that the cold is more cold than the, than the warmth is warm. It's like saying the yin is more yin than the yang is yang. And before anyone tries to fight me for comparing good and bad things uh, to, you know, things that are objectively true, um, good and bad are objectively true things. So even if desire didn't exist, it's still true that if it did exist, it constitute good. Other objectively true things like math or biology are objective for similar reasons. Even if there was only one object in the universe, it is still true that two objects plus two objects would equal four objects. Even if frogs went extinct, 
it'd still be true that if they didn't go extinct, they'd be amphibians. So I hope you understood that point on objective morality. If you're confused or unconvinced, I'd recommend you watch my video, Why Morality is Objective, uh, if you haven't already. <coughs> going to play a game. It's called Don't Bother Raven. Rule number one, no talking. Azerath Metrion Zinthos. <sighs> Good idea, Robin. Put Raven in charge of the kids. Melvin. What are you doing in here? Bobby couldn't fit in our car. Just squish your imaginary friend down and let's go back to our seats. Bobby is real! Yeah, the blue girl is scary. Come on, you can leave Bobby here. He'll be fine. Timmy's gotta go! What do you mean he's gotta... Oh... <laughs> You okay in there? If you're done, can we get back to our seats now? <laughs> monkey man! Timmy, what's a monkey man? Mala. Give me the children. Run! So now that I've tackled the common antinatalist talking point of suffering being more bad than well-being is good, I'm now going to tackle their talking point concerning consent. So I'd like to bring your attention to another hypothetical. Let's say you have a girlfriend, because obviously in real life you don't if you're watching this video, and you and your girlfriend have consensual sex uh, every night for a year. Now, one night she gets blacked out drunk and she wants to have sex with you. Just like you guys have been doing for uh, a year, the only difference being that she's blacked out drunk, it would not be immoral to have sex with your girlfriend in this, in this scenario, it would not be rape, because probability-wise, uh, it would probably increase the well-being. It is unlikely that she'll wake up and think, damn, I shouldn't have done that. Even though you guys have been doing the same thing every night for a year, or if that, if that isn't good enough for you, let's say uh, when she wakes up, she says, oh, I want to get blacked out drunk again, and feel free to have sex with me if I come on to you, and she's completely fine with the fact that you guys had sex, you know, the previous night when she was blacked out. You know, if you guys had sex again while she was blacked out drunk. That would be unconsensual sex. But does it matter? No, because probability-wise, it does more good than bad to have unconsensual sex in this hypothetical. The same thing could be said about having a child. They didn't consent to being born, but probability-wise, if you take a survey of most people, I think you'll find that they were glad that they were born. Uh, when, it can, when it can be said that they probably will be fine with something, they don't need to consent to that something. In conclusion, Antinatalism is wrong. So yeah, that's basically the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Discord, and have a nice day or night, everybody. Quick hide! We don't have time for games. Come out, come out, wherever you are.
we're stranded in the middle of nowhere and we've got a big gorilla chasing after us. How are we saved? <laughs>